I always reckon Yeben looks like Jesus. <laughs> so my, my boast is that we have Jesus Christ in our church. <laughs> Every time I see him, I'm reminded, what a great guy you are, Yeben. You're a blessing. What a great day this is. I don't think we can truly understand what kind of day it is. Maybe later down the track we might know that God has done something quite different, quite unique. And I can tell you this, it's a real honor to be here with you. And I uh, brought some friends from Mackay, just a few friends, but there's a bunch with Pastor Darren here from Townsville have come as well. So great to see you, mate. And uh, who knows what God's got planned. We've just got a bit of an inkling, you know, and so I just shout and praise, mainly because I, I've come up here with no plan. And I felt that the Lord wouldn't tell me what his plan was. He just said, you get there, you start, and we'll just see what happens. But I want to share a little bit about the kind of ministry I think the Lord wants to see in this area. And when I mean this area, I mean which Sunday and Mackay. It's a whole region. If you look on the map, the two regional areas, there's a huge amount of land. And I like to think that our spiritual boundary is these council boundaries. They'll do, amen? That'll do. Council, anybody in for that? They'll do for spiritual zones. And uh, we'll have everything inside those zones. Thank you very much. And so they form like a territorial zone that we become responsible for on behalf of the Lord. And then it starts to change the whole atmosphere. We don't just live here. We live here. Amen. We're not just here. We're here for a purpose. And we're here for a role. We're here to do something. We're here to serve God in His purpose. And we're to find out what His purpose is. And I really believe that God will speak to us through the prophetic word. What His idea is and His plan is. But I have this idea that God wants to do something powerful. And I've felt for years coming up to Proserpine and the Whitsunday area, that there's been a lot of battles in the heavenlies. There's been a lot going on in this place. And I think the church, the sum total of the church, is that it's kind of suffered a little bit because of what's been going on. And uh, this is what the Lord said to me. Nevertheless. That's it, nevertheless. <laughs> nevertheless what? <laughs> God says nevertheless. When He says nevertheless, it means everything that just got said beforehand means absolutely zip. Because the next thing he says is the thing that's most important. So you come here with a history of things. Good, bad, ugly, and indifferent, and whatever. They're all mixed up. And the Lord says, nevertheless. But, 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 but God, you, what about this? What about that? Nevertheless. When God just gives you a set record, when he just goes like that, he means he's dealt with the past. And I feel like this, the Lord is saying to us, nevertheless, I don't want you to go backwards. I don't want you to try and fix anything. I don't want you to think of all the troubles of the history. I want you to move on from here with a clean sheet of paper. I believe God just wants us to move on. And so I haven't come here to fix any problems. I'm actually not very good at it. Usually what happens when I try to fix problems is I make more. <laughs> Anybody had any ministry from me? I just create more problems. It's like in the end there's more answers at the end than there was at the beginning. God's a good God, though. Amen. And uh, I was going to share a few pictures, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I just feel that the Lord wants me to move on quickly to begin to establish a foundation that I believe is truly an apostolic foundation. I want you to come with me to the book of Luke, chapter 5. And I want to pick up the story where Jesus walked on the beach and he began to teach and at the, he got into Simon's boat. Because Simon didn't know Jesus at this point. And Jesus didn't know Simon, or at least we don't know that he did. Maybe he did. Maybe God said, go and stand in Simon's boat. And Jesus said, which one's that one? That one over there. Oh, okay. So he went and stood in Simon's boat. And he taught. And we get to verse 4. When he stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I'll let down the net. Now, when I studied that, I realized that Peter missed some crucial words in responding to the Lord. Crucial words. Three crucial words. 
Let's have another look what Jesus actually said. He said, launch out into the deep and let your nets down for a catch. A catch. For a catch. Peter said, nevertheless, we'll let down the nets. He wasn't expecting a catch. The professional fishermen had been out there all night. He was just saying, oh, well, because you said so, I'll do it. But I expect nothing. Peter, the great man of God to be, expected zero fish. He said, we've been out there all night and caught nothing. It's almost like me and my son-in-law, Brett, out fishing. It's just almost an exact replica of, of both of us racing to the sum total of zero fish. It's, it happens. In fact, I don't want to go with Brett, and he doesn't want to go with me anymore. Of course, we're not really quite sure who it is affecting the other. <laughs> so here's the... And this is what makes me feel really, really good, is that the professional fisherman, Peter and his entourage, and how many were in his company, we don't know. But he and his, all his band of merry fishermen caught zero fish. And they've been at it all night long. It wasn't like they just gave it a shot. I would have given it... You know, I would have been smarter than them. I would have come home. And I would have gone and bought the fish and chips from up the road, and at least we would have eaten something. No, 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 no. All night. So, a bit frustrating for fishermen to be out there all night and catch nothing because that's what they get paid on. So, guess what their pay was? Nothing. So, he's not going to believe the master has just spoken. He doesn't realize who it is that just spoke to him. Three powerful words for a catch. Jesus just doesn't tell you to do anything just for the sake of it so that everything can go on as before. No, he's got a plan. He's got a big plan. He's the Lord of the harvest. I don't know how he knew where the fish was, but it wasn't a big deal to God. It says there afterwards, they were all amazed. Let's read it. They were all amazed. Nevertheless. And in verse 6, And when he had done this, they caught a great number of fish. Everybody say great number, great number. Of, fish. of fish. That's a lot, isn't it? A great number is a lot. I've never ever had a fishing experience like that. It's like two, two fishermen two from Ireland going out fishing on the Sea of Galilee. This is the Sea of Galilee, I think. And they have this great catch of fish. And Murphy said to Paddy, we should put an X on the side of the boat where we caught the fish. <laughs> Murphy said to Paddy, don't be so stupid. We might not get this boat next time. <laughs> With apologies to all our Irish friends that are in the room tonight. So they signaled to their partners in other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. This was a boat sinking catch. Just one word from God equaled a boat sinking catch. They did not have the capacity to carry the blessing. They were sinking under its weight. They'd gone from one problem to another. I know this, that if you get all the fish in your boat and your boat sinks, the fish are back out where they came from. <laughs> so you need your boat to float. Or you just need to get a bigger boat. Oh, where'd you hear that? You just need to get a bigger boat when Jesus is speaking. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Strange thing to say after being blessed with the kind of fish that's going to make your day. But you see, it's the goodness of God that leads to repentance. And Je Peter was convicted right there. Probably for the first time in his life, where Jesus had done something marvelous in front of him. And he realized he was a sinful man in the presence of Almighty God. For he and all who were with him were astonished. I said amazed. I meant astonished. They were astonished at what? At the catch. They were astonished at the thing Jesus said, at the catch. It tells me they weren't used to seeing things like that. It tells me they weren't expecting anything either. <laughs> it tells me they were right on the same page as Peter. Here we go again. Let's go out and get nothing. You know, let's just prove to this dude there's no fish out there. They were astonished at the catch of fish which they have taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. 
So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. Hallelujah. And this is what the Lord is saying to us from now on. You will catch men. In this area, we will catch men. With Sunday Impact Church, we're going to catch men and women and children. I believe that God has a strategy. We let down our net, which means He'll use our resources, our abilities, what we currently have to go out and we will miraculously see our nets bursting with people. People. This place is chock solid with people. Have you noticed? There's people everywhere. I went to the shopping center the other day and I thought, there's people. You get on the beach, there's people. You go everywhere and there's people, there's oodles of them. It's like there's no lack. I mean, it's not like you go out all night and not meet a person. There's no fish out there. Yes, there is. There's people out there. Amen. Lots of people. And so I believe God has a strategy. Jesus has a plan to reap souls. And I believe this, that God wants us to agree with Him. I said a couple of weeks ago that the double-edged sword that comes out of the mouth of Jesus is a Greek word called ziphon, or ziphos. Ziphos means double-edged sword. But this, the word double-edged sword means two-mouthed. Two-mouthed. Two mouths. Now, we know God hasn't got two mouths. He hasn't got one on the front, one on the back. He's got one mouth. But he needs somebody with a mouth to agree with him. So the seconder, after God speaks the first mouth, is the first one who speaks, did I agree with what God just said? And then the Word of God becomes a two-edged sword in our hands and in our mouth because of the power of agreement with what God just said. He's saying, let your net down for a catch. And somebody needs to say, I agree with that. And then that word becomes a living word, sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing between bone and marrow, thoughts and intents of the heart, and everything else you can think of, because it's sharp. It separates your soul out from your spirit. It separates all the rubbish from the mind of mankind and leaves behind the pure word of the spirit, which cannot do anything but go back to God fulfilled. This is a faith walk. And I believe in the apostolic ministry. I, it's been maligned, it's been put down but you've taken away the greatest thing out of the church, you've taken away the ministry and the style of ministry you take away the anointing for which everything must be built on, in fact the church is built on Jesus Christ, the chief apostle and upon the word of the apostles and the work of the first apostles the Bible says that Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith, he's the beginning and the end it tells us twice in the book of Revelations right at the end, that he was also the beginning and he's also the end. If there was an anointing to get the church going, I want to tell you this, there's an anointing to finish it off. If there was a powerful anointing that came like a mighty wind and, and tongues of fire and did an amazing thing that turned the world upside down back in the first day, if that was so strong, then what is the end going to be like? Perhaps you just need some new pictures in your mind to revive an excitement in you and a belief in you that when God is coming to do something powerful, it's going to be twice as good at the end than it was at the beginning. He's looking for a two-edged sword. He's looking for a power of agreement in your mouth. Because the first thing you say after God's voice is extremely important to you and how things happen in your life. God doesn't want to be met with silence. He doesn't want to be met with, we've been fishing all night. Who are you? He doesn't want that. He said, Jesus, don't you know what it's like here? Don't you know what kind of battle we've had in the Sundays in the last few years? Don't you know what it's been like? Where have you been, God, when we cried out to you? Where were you? And so you can get a little bit hard around the edges and you get a little bit cynical because of that's how it's been and that's the truth that you experience. But God all the time was building you up for a new season. And I want to declare to you tonight that it is a new season. It's a new time, says the Lord. It's a new time. It's a new day. God has brought a new thing to bear. I'm, I'm not the new thing, by the way. John just looked at me and said, well, that, that, he's a new thing. I'm not a new thing. I'm 60 years old. I'm not a new thing. God does a new thing. And we just get to work with him. Amen. We get to play with him in his new thing. And I think that new thing is the last thing. I think the last thing is the ending anointing. 
He is the finisher of our faith. I believe in making declarations as long as it's from the Lord. You've got to trust that what you're saying is what, you know, if it's not God, it's not going to work. But His Word works. If He says, let your net down for a catch, there's a catch there. Even if you've never seen a fish for ages and you know there's no fish. I mean, it doesn't matter whether there's any fish in the lake or not. If Jesus said, let down your f- net for a catch, there's fish there. He'll make them. He'll just make them for you. He'll bring them in by helicopter from another country. I don't know how he gets them there. He'll get them there, okay? He just says, let your net down for a catch. You say, yes, Jesus. You say, well, you don't know the people that live in, in the Sundays. You don't know how, how ferociously opposed to the gospel they are. If Jesus says, let your net down for a catch, they're going to get stuck in that net. I want to tell you something. When God shows up, they'll have no defense. Jesus Christ is a wrecking ball. I heard that from Tim Hall at conference. He's a wrecking ball. You know, and I, I can't get Miley Cyrus out of my head when I think of that, but... <laughs> Francis said, don't go there, don't go there, don't go there. But he... Let's just erase her out of my mind. Yeah, I did it. She's gone. <laughs> I just see Jesus on a wrecking ball. <laughs> the sweet, the, you see, God is able to smash down all the works of the enemy. You know, he's, the weapons of your warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the tearing down of strongholds. Amen. And you, you just don't realize how powerful it, or how powerful Jesus is inside of you. There is a wrecking ball inside of you. And you smash down all the defenses. All the clever arguments. There's so many clever people in Australia. They've got so many great ideas. Or at least they seem great. And they've got layers and layers of opinions. You know, they've been doing Facebook for long enough now and they've practiced opinionating themselves. They've so practiced on Twitter and Facebook and emails and everything else that everybody knows how to form an opinion really quick. It doesn't matter what the opinion is. Just get it out there really fast. And so we're an opinionated society But the only thing that matters is what God says. And so church, you're a wrecking ball. And God's swinging you into this area. And I believe this, that the weapons that are inside of you are powerful. They're tearing down of strongholds. They're they're going to cut through people's mindsets. I just believe it. I, I really think we're on the edge of something quite exciting. If you can get anything from conference from Tim Hall's messages, I don't even know if they're available yet get them. That man spoke to our movement. He said, 2016 is going to be a year for us. He's come from the Assembly of God. It's amazing for an AOG pastor to say something like that to us. I was astonished. I said, those guys don't like to let anything out. Anyway, it's it's history, isn't it, God? Yeah, okay, that's history. Uh, The new day is that he came and he spoke to our movement. And he said, you guys are pioneers. You're forerunners. He said, and I believe this. I really believe with all my heart. He said, if you would pray, if you would seek God, you will find Him beginning to move powerfully again through your movement this year, 2016. So I think, friends, we should set our faces before God. We should have a new expectation in a new day with a new anointing. I believe there's an anointing for you. And I believe it could be called something like the finisher's anointing. Not the, not the fisher's anointing. The finisher's anointing power to get the job done power to finish the job I'm not great at finishing practical jobs there's a few jobs around home that I haven't finished so in the natural I'm not the greatest finisher I'm good at starting things and then I'm really good at getting other people to take on from there that's my I'm gifted at finding people to do work I I can really kick things off but someone else has got to come in and run with that thing But I do believe this, that the finishing anointing is an anointing from Jesus Christ. It's an apostolic anointing that is pouring out upon his church in these last days. It's not just for us. It's to get the job done. Hallelujah. It's to finish it. Every anointing is for a purpose. Every purpose has an assignment. And every assignment must be completed. We must finish the work that God has given us. And so I believe this, that there is going to be a sweeping revival through this land. Tonight, I want you to make a declaration with me. We speak to what's under the ground. Write down what's under the ground here. You see, we stand on on the ground, obviously. Where else do you stand? You stand on the ground. 
<laughs> but in the spirit realm, it's not firm. It's like jelly. You just pass straight through it. Demons just go straight into the ground. You see, spiritually, they're not bound by the rules of the earth. They just go straight through. And so can God. In fact, angels will chase them straight down and chase them straight out. Angels can do it too. And so how far down do they go? I don't know. What did you ask me that question for? Well, we said we didn't. You just said it. Okay. Well, I don't know how far they go. They just go down, okay? They go deep. What's, what's under here affects what's on top. Our Aboriginal brothers and sisters have a powerful job to do as custodians of the land. I believe God gave them custody of the land. Now I know that they need help with that, spiritual help. Because our land, Australia, needs a visitation of God. And I think they're going to lead us through it, quite frankly. I really do believe that they're going to come and say things like this, that the spirit that's in the ground is not the Holy Spirit. The spirit that's in the ground has usurped the Holy Spirit and has taken uh, uh, them prisoner. But I believe this, that we've got the power to speak on behalf of God. I want us to have an apostolic voice that will speak as if Jesus is speaking. That we're going to speak to the ground. We're going to speak into the heavens. And we're going to declare a thing as if it's done. Hallelujah. We're a church, I think, that's going to scare the spirit realm. A church, that's, I don't know, that's going to finish the job. Get this work done. Would you stand to your feet, please? Nevertheless. Nevertheless. You got an excuse? Nevertheless. You got a reason why you can't do it? Nevertheless. I want you to begin to pray with me. You're a bunch of seers. I know you can see in the spirit. You see well. I want you to see into the ground. See below the carpet. See under the concrete. See down into the earth. See the spiritual realm down there. May God open your eyes tonight. Lord God, open our eyes that we might be seers, that we would see it as it is in the spirit realm. Lord God. And we want to speak your word tonight, Lord God. Speak into the very earth of Australia. As deep as it needs to go, my God, to uproot, uproot demons, uproot principalities, uproot powers that have been ruling for generations ruling for hundreds if not thousands of years undisturbed but tonight we disturb you we plead the blood of Jesus upon you we declare the cross of Calvary against you we declare ground that this is holy ground this is this is holy ground this is the land of the Holy Spirit we speak into you earth we take authority over you and we pull you up out by the roots we grab a hold of the root system and we root you out we drive you out of the ground in Jesus name we declare this to be holy ground we declare this whole area to be holy ground this whole region including both council areas we declare the whole region holy ground my God we pray that you begin to shake the earth again you begin to shake it loose my God so that the powers that rule people are broken from underneath the ground, my God, in Jesus' mighty name. We wrestle against it in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We send a wrecking ball against you in the name of Jesus Christ and the word of God, which cannot be moved, cannot be changed, cannot be altered. It's yes and amen to him who believes, my God. And we say that whatever we bound on earth and under the earth is bound in heaven. Today, we bind every spirit that's under the ground in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. We take authority in the heavens tonight. The heavenly realm. Lord, may your angels be free to move around unhindered. Lord, we declare the heavens, the first heaven here, Lord God, that's right around us. Lord, we declare it open for the kingdom of God. Lord, we take authority over every spiritual power that wants to rule in the skies. We say you're bound and your work is finished. We command you to depart from this region in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You're bound and you must go in Jesus' mighty name. We take back the heavens, hallelujah, for the kingdom of God, the glory of God. We thank you, my God, that you would fill, fill the heavens with your glory. You'd fill the ground with your glory. My God, that you pour out your spirit both on the earth and in the earth. Pour out your spirit in the heavens, my God. Hallelujah. May your people be bold to make a declaration tonight. Lord, we take back this ground. We take back this place in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I want to share with you a, a vision I had this morning before we left for church. I had a little bit of time before we jumped in the car. And I was talking to God. And I was imagining myself before the throne. And I shared this morning on communing with God between the wings of the cherubim. And I saw myself as a little boy in my school uniform. Shorts, shirt, socks, cute little black shoes, little hair done like Lord Fauntleroy. Little boy, little schoolboy, about the age of five or six. I said, is that me? Yes, it's you. Oh, childlike. You know, a God had given me childlikeness, not childish, but childlike. That's why I behave like a child at times. Just innocent. I believe God has given me innocence back. And the Lord is saying, watch this. And I saw his finger beginning to stir all around. He's just stirring. Did you know God was a big stirrer? He's stirring everything around. I just saw that finger stirring around and around and around and around. And it was causing havoc in the lives of non-Christians. He was stirring things that were turning upside down and inside out. And the people were just overturned and loosened from the things that held them back from coming to the Lord. And I just saw God stirring and stirring. He said to me, because I asked him if he wanted me to go to Israel. I was just talking about Israel. I said, no. No, I don't want you to go to Israel. Stay where the miracle is. The miracle in your city and beyond. I heard that. Yeah. Stay where the miracle is right now. Stay focused on the miracle. And he's stirring, friends. He's stirring in the spirit realm right now and he's turning things upside down. And the people that you're seeing, they look on the outside as if they've got things sorted. But I want to tell you this, nothing's sorted anymore. Things are turned upside down. Then I began to see these shapes gray white looking shapes and their clothes and their face were the same color and they were just coming like ghosts out from the stirrings from the whirlwind and they were just coming in into where we were in church or where it was just with me I was just seeing these people come and, and they just walked right past me and they, and they seemed like they were going into this open space and all of a sudden the colors came upon them and I could see them and I could see their clothes and I could see them jumping up and down and shouting to the Lord I just see the salvation that had come upon them and all the time more and more people were streaming through Hallelujah. then I saw this train that was upside down an upside down train I want to tell you something an upside down train is not going very far people we're in it, and I saw the hands of Christians reaching out to grab people, and I saw these people cursing and swearing and refusing to come out of their upside-down train, thinking that that was better than what we could offer them with Jesus Christ. And the Lord said to me, even though their world is turned upside-down, Ken, many of them will still not come. But this is the thing. Many are coming. Multitudes, stirrings taking place. Jesus said, let your net down for a catch. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Can I have the music team, please?